Okay, Jenna, I see you. Jenna, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Hey, mama. Welcome to episode 83 of the Positive Impact Podcast, where we talk about all topics relevant to the game I love. I am your host, Terrell Doja, and tonight's guest is University of Dayton redshirt senior, Miss Jenna Giacconi. Superstar. What's up? What's going on? Not much. How are you? How you been? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Uh, I can't complain. I can't complain. It's good to have you on. Good to see you all grown up. I know, right? It's good to be on. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Nah, no problem at all. No problem at all. So um, I want to get right into it. You know, like 2020 was a crazy, crazy year. Um crazy just to be a human being, you know, crazy to be a student athlete at this time as well. Talk about what you've learned, you know, what you took from 2020 and, you know, what it, you know, what it did, what kind of effect did it have on you, either positive or negative? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, crazy is a perfect word to describe the year overall. Uh, can't think of a better one, but I don't know, really just taught me that nothing's guaranteed. Um, our team being a student athlete, we went from probably the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. Mm -hmm. um, winning the Atlantic 10 tournament um, on our home court. And then just days later, finding out that we won't be playing in March Madness. Um, nothing's guaranteed. And then just this, just this year going through the pandemic, uh, trying to get through a season through shutdowns and all that kind of stuff. You know, you really just figure out who's, who's in your circle, who you can trust and lean on um, perseverance, resilience, and all that kind of stuff just to push through and uh, make it through the next day. And that's really what, we embodied here at Dayton to get to the season and uh, what we're going to continue to embody going into the tournament next week. Nice. Nice. So Del Mar, New York raised Bethlehem high school um, athletic family coming from an athletic family. Talk about, do you remember your first memory of basketball? Like how'd you fall in love with the game? Who, who put the ball in your hand? Uh, yeah. First memories are just around my family, uh, youngest of three, both older siblings, obviously Gabby, you guys all know. Uh, and then my dad definitely put the first ball in my hands. He played when he was growing up through high school and stuff like that. So just balling out in the driveway with the family, neighbors, all that kind of stuff, probably my first basketball memories. No doubt. Shout out. Shout out to Big Jim. Shout out to Big Jim, <laughs> man. No question about it. So. I mean, from an early, you know, from an early age, you know, I kind of moved into the capital region, you know, probably when you were in junior high, but just your height. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, when kids get tall at an early age, they tend to put them by the basket. You know what I mean? You're the tallest one out there, but, you know, you were able to, you know, they were able to put the ball in your hands and you were able to um, facilitate and pretty much do whatever your team needed from an early age. So, you know, talk about talk about that skill set of yours, like just feeling comfortable, right? Instead of playing back to the basket, you know, playing, you know, and, and being a facilitator and a and a point guard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was overall I was just fortunate enough to have people in my corner that uh, wanted me to have guard like skills before I really knew what the game was all about. Um, I grew up having the ball in my hands, um, working on ball handling every day, whether it was from my dad or early young coaches. Um, and then just developed my IQ, um, year after year, uh, playing with my sister helped a lot. Um, you know, we understood each other very well on the court. She always caught some of the passes that other people wouldn't be able to catch. Mm -hmm. Um, that always helped and it was fun to play with her, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was just, fortunate enough to be uh, brought up as a point guard actually early on um, and just develop my guard like skills even though like you said yeah a lot of younger girls that do have a lot of play just automatically get shoved to be a post player mm -hmm. um, 
and I was fortunate enough to, you know, continue to develop my guard skills. And now I'm here playing a guard in college. Nice, nice. And so we talked, you know, you referenced Gabby, obviously, you know, went on to play at Northeastern, was a hell of a player in her own right. Talk about the battles y'all might have. Like, was there some real, like, hardcore backyard battles? Like, I'm not talking to you for a couple of days, but, like, how was it between y'all, like, competitive-wise? Yeah, no, we're definitely very competitive growing up. Always, you know, got into brawls and stuff like that. Always playing one-on-one -on -one or some type of competition, whether it's horse in the driveway or two-on-two -two with my brother and another friend. Mm -hmm. um, so very competitive, but we – kind of like any teammate relationship, you go at each other during practice or during competition, and then your best friend's off the court. Um, you leave everything that happens on the court, um, and it just builds your relationship, and that's kind of what we had. Um, and then once we were playing together in AAU and, you know, in high school at Bethlehem, mm. some of the best memories, just fortunate enough to have a sister 15 months apart and go through that journey with her. Nah, no, no question. So talk about – Talk about the AAU thing. Y'all y'all came up playing for the Capitals. Um, and so talk about the difference for you, like what it was like playing in Section 2 in the Capital Region and then in the spring and the summertime playing with the best of the best, you know, so to speak, on the Capitals and going to play um, other players from, from state to state. Like what was that like? And was there a, a time where, you know, was there a moment where you felt like, I can really do this on the on the next level too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was awesome uh, playing. Obviously, in sec section two, uh, you pretty much are playing against some of your best friends because, like you said, in the spring, we all come together. Um, you know, like the Selena Lots, Carly Bolins, we're all in one team um, for a lot of the years on the Capitals, traveling to other states and playing the top competition from other states. Mm -hmm. So that was always so much fun. Still talk to all of them. Um, just a great way to just meet some of your best friends that you'll have for a lifetime um and then uh I don't know if there was a specific point where I knew I'd be able to take my game to the next level but I guess just always playing up a year um in order to play on my sister's team um I was always the youngest by far on every team a every AU team I played on um so I guess just developing my game with older older players and realizing the impact I was making um, I just grew – it grew the love for the game that I had and just it showed me that I wanted, I wanted to take my talents to the next level and it made me work even harder. No question. So you talk about playing up and, you know, obviously you played varsity at Bethlehem at an early age and you and Gabby were able to, you know, grow together, you know, Section 2 championship up in there. But what was it like for you when she left? And now you had to – and now you had to lead – younger players coming up under you like what was that like not not to have that security blanket so to speak and now like you had to be the one like in order for the success to happen I have to bring these young players along so talk about that experience and what you got out of that yeah my senior year is definitely different um going off like a high from highest of the highs my junior year like you said the sectional title and then yeah being a senior um, losing some of the key players, it was definitely different. I had to, I had to play a different role. Looking back, um, had to grow my leadership skills, um, try to figure out how to motivate younger players and just bring them along, um, you know, teach them the right ways. So it was definitely a different role that I had, different experience, but I think it just helped me grow my overall game and um, grow me overall as a person as well, which I've brought to the next level. So talk about your recruiting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're, you know, was it a difficult process for you, right? Because that's probably one of the first big decisions that a kid will make, right? Where am I going to spend my next four years and grow from a, a young, you know, a young woman to to a grown woman, you know what I mean? Um, and so talk about your recruiting process. Um, who did it come down to, you know, at the end of the day and what made you choose, um, ultimately choose Dayton? Yeah, recruiting process seems like forever ago now yeah. but um it was stressful at times uh didn't really want to take part in it a lot of times uh kind of swept some things under the rug and just didn't want to um, be involved in all the phone calls and texting mm -hmm. but uh grateful for all the visits I took all the coaches that showed interest obviously um I you know watched my sister and and my parents go through it with her so that helped a lot um the three that it ended up coming down to was uh Dayton Virginia Tech and University of Virginia. Um, and then I kind of had the cliche moment that when you know, you know, um, when I stepped onto Dayton campus. 
I believe, going into my junior year. Um, so I just – I had that cliche moment that you hear people talk about. Um, I got that feeling, and I just went with what my gut was telling me and ended up committing, canceled a couple of visits that I had planned, um, and – Never, never look back. Don't really have any regrets. I'm happy for my choice. Now, now you're doing you're doing great there. So you get to the University of Dayton, and you know, fun you know, fun fact here. You know, I'll, I'll let you in on something that you don't know. Seventh grade, I spent a year in Dayton, Ohio. My stepfather was stationed at Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. So Dayton, Ohio holds a special place holds a special place in my heart. So. There you um, go. Yeah, so we connected in, in, in those ways. Um, so what was the biggest jump from you, from your senior year, right? Like, I'm paying 32 minutes a game, right? Like, I'm being depended on, and, you know, everybody's looking to me, and now I get to college as a freshman, and I got to start all over again. What was the biggest adjustment for you between your senior year and your, and your freshman year? Uh, just from a college athlete standpoint, the biggest adjustment – for me was just the time commitment and then the pace of the game um, is just huge. I had a different, I had a little bit of different start than your typical freshman with injuries and stuff like that. Played in my first couple games, um, was getting into a groove, but uh, freshman year was cut short for me um, to an injury and my sophomore year as well. Um, but I, I'm actually fortunate and grateful for that time. Cause I sat back um and learned a lot through my upperclassmen, um, some really good players that, you know, were juniors and seniors, and even players that were in my own class, um, I learned through over that time when I was out with an injury and, you know, learned things that I'm putting into my game still today. So, you know, you never you never get to choose your destiny. I obviously didn't want to be injured during those, those times, but that's what happened. And, um, you know, I just looked at the positives of it and learned and built my IQ um, off the court. So... I want to I want to touch on that, and I'm glad that you got into that, right? Because again, I don't know if you had any serious injuries or whatever, and had to miss considerable time in high school, right? right. So I had to red I redshirted my freshman year. You know, my freshman year in college, like mentally, like you know what I mean, like mentally, right? Like you worked hard all summer, you worked hard all preseason, like you're really keeping the momentum going, and it's like your freshman year gets cut short, and then you got to sit out your whole sophomore year like you know what i mean so it's not like a tweaked ankle or anything what was the injury and mentally how did it affect you mentally yeah so i ended up breaking my foot um through my freshman year and it ended up taking two surgeries we thought it was only gonna take one so i was planning on playing my sophomore year but it turned out to take two so yeah pretty much uh missed a season and a half um it was really hard at first mentally. Um, like you kind of said, you come in as a freshman, you work your butt off. Um, you know, you you get, you get into a groove, you start gelling with the team and then you get hit with the news that, you know, you, the game's going to be taken away from you for quite some time. Um, so it was challenging mentally at first, but you know, with the support that we had here, you just got to accept it and then figure out ways to continue to grow um, without actually having the ball in your hands. Um, and that's what I did. So you know, getting the playbook, still watching film, still working with coaches in the offices. Trust me, they put you to work. Yeah, nah, nah, no, no question about it. And I think, you know, I think the biggest thing for you, right? So, like I said, like mentally is huge when you get injured, right? Sometimes you don't really feel a part of the team. You know what I mean? Like you, and now you're sitting there watching, like, I think I can help there, right? So like mentally it screws you up, but Here's what I love. Here's what I love the most about you right now. Mentally, you still stay focused on your academics and made the commission as honor roll for the A10, right? So you're a student athlete. I'm huge into that. So it could have just taken away, right? You could have made a lot of excuses for yourself. And, you know, I'm injured right now. I don't really feel like hitting the books, but you understand the reason why you're at the University of Dayton. So proud of you for that. Kudos to you for, for doing that. Thank um, you. But talk about your rehab process and, and, you know, what kept you and what kept you motivated through that because rehab can be super hard as well. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a long journey to get back out on the court, but the support system that we have here, our athletic trainers, our doctors, they helped me along the, the way today. Um, and then ultimately just seeing the team grind and practice every single day just motivated me inside to just get better every single day, get healthier um, is what I'm talking about. Um, just get healthy, do exact everything that I can, whether it's, 
you know, specific rehab exercises and eating healthy and putting the right things in my body. That's going to you know, help my health and help my recovery. Um, I really invested in and got some special orthotics in the shoes to this day to help me out um, with post-operation pain. So that's good. And just continue to grind every day. Nah, no doubt about it. And then you come back your junior year and, you know, you have a good year. You're starting to play Jenna Jaconi type of basketball. You understand what I'm saying? So it's almost like, right, because sometimes it can be an advantage, right? Now I'm, now I'm a little older, right? And, you know, like my IQ is higher. You know what I'm saying? I've watched the game for so long that I continue to study. So now when I get my chance again, I'm pretty much kind of better than I was two years ago, you know what I mean? So talk about when you got back on the court in your junior year, like how long did it take you to get into a real groove, right? Because sometimes we'll, sometimes we'll like baby the injury, like mentally, like, you know, I don't push off as much as I used to. So how long did it take you to get your, your confidence back in your foot? Yeah, I mean, it definitely took me, took me a while. I had a couple of times where, you know, I, I had a scare where I was like, oh, that didn't feel right, that type of thing. A um, couple days where I just wasn't able to go um, from pain, but just day in and day out of practice after practice, you just see the see the ball go through the net, build your confidence. You know, a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there in games. Um, you know, every game you just build on it from the last one. I was behind some really good players um, that, like I said, I learned from a lot. Um, and each each year, I've just I've been able to build my confidence, grow my game. You know tag some minutes along from the previous year and uh, playing the most I have, I ever have um, this current year, um, which is, th seems to be the trend. So I don't know. I'm content. I'm happy. I'm ready to, ready to go into the A-10 tournament next week. Um, but yeah, it's, the injury's been holding up pretty well. Good. Nah. And, and I'm seeing, it seemed like from the beginning, like you did some of your best work against the, the best competition, right? So, my career high as a freshman was against UConn. You know what I mean? Then I had 19 on South Carolina. Like those are the those are the top tier teams in this country. And it's like you kind of did your thing against them. Did you just have it going? Is there a supreme confidence that goes in with those games? Like talk about the elevation in those games and what did that and, and what does that do for your confidence? Yeah. Uh... I don't know. I guess just a different mindset when you when you see that name across the other team's chest. Uh, I kind I forgot about the UConn game until you just mentioned it. Yeah. Remember the South Carolina one pretty well, but mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, heated up in that game. You know, trusted it, built some confidence when you see the first and second one go through. And coaches all about if you if you feel it, just keep shooting it, shoot your shot. That type of mentality, and that's what I had. Um, keep doing it. There you go. So now you know. You know, last year, you know, your third year playing, um, playing for the program, the minutes start to go up. You know, what I mean, now you're starting to get real, real comfortable. You guys are, you know, you guys are having, um, you know, super success. Talk about going into the Atlantic tournament, Atlantic Ten tournament last year, and and talk about how it felt to win it, right? Because that's the big deal, right? You want to win your conference championship. You want to get to the big dance. So. Talk about that ride, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you, you won a lot of games in your career dating back to high school. So talk about that feeling with you and your team. Yeah, I mean, that feeling was unmatched last year. Uh, fortunately, we were able to play play the tournament on our home court. Um, we're, we've been rotating it in the conference. And last year we uh, hosted it. And there's probably, probably to this day my favorite basketball memory is just winning that on the home court. Everyone's families were there, uh, confetti falling, um, but really just the ride of the entire year last year. Um, the class that I came in with, we were true seniors, a um, bunch of great relationships on the team. We were very close um, team off the court and on the court. So I wouldn't have wanted to go to battle with anyone else and wouldn't, wouldn't trade that day for anything. It was It was amazing and one of the best memories. No question. And then, so now we got to talk about the highs and the lows, right? So, right, you don't get, you know, it's tough to get to the big dance without winning your conference tournament, right? So right. conference tournament, check. All right, let's go. Like, we're, we're, going, we're going dancing, right? That's the whole celebration, cutting down the nets. We're going dancing. Let's go. Yeah. And then it happened. Talk about, do you remember, like, when you found out, how you found out, 
take me through that moment when you found out that you guys weren't, you know, that the NCAA tournament got canceled. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember perfectly, but I, I know we had all just heard that our the men's Atlantic 10 conference tournament was canceled, so our men's team was there. They found out their games weren't going to be played. So we were kind of expecting it. You know, you see some stuff on social media, um, but you, you just hope and pray that there are rumors and they're going to find a way to still continue playing. Um, but, yeah, when the news broke, we were all just, like, in shock. And, you know, you say, you know, we went from the highs to the highs. We were getting ready for Selection Monday. We were super stoked to just be going dancing, like you said. Um, one, of the, one of the things you dream about growing up as a basketball player um but yeah then you get that news and it took us a couple it took us quite a while to adapt and realize like okay this, this is serious we're done we're not playing um you know some tears were flowing some speeches yeah. were some yeah. speeches were given from some seniors yeah. um so it was emotional and you know hard mentally but just got to accept it, it couldn't nothing we could have done to prevent it so we just had to uh hold on to the winning feeling of winning on our home court, still winning the conference tournament, which was obviously a big deal. And that's what, that's what motivated us this year. So what was it, you know, so what was it like, like over the summertime, as far as like, you know, like, do you usually stay for like summer school? Are there over, over the summer workouts and stuff? Like what was different about preparing for this year with the, um, with the pandemic? Yeah, so we normally go home um, for about six weeks, and then we're back on campus in late June to start um, for the su second summer session and then start preseason workouts. Um, obviously, this year was very different weeks. It got sent home a lot earlier than normal in March, um, but a lot of Zoom, uh, film on Zoom, team meetings on Zoom, Zoom lifts from everyone's own homes in their own, own states. Everyone's on Zoom doing their lifts with our strength coach. Mm -hmm. um you know getting basketball workouts sent to us having to you know write down your shots and your attempts and just coaches found a different way to try to keep everyone motivated and you know keep everything competitive and stuff like that and uh, I think our program did a great job of it um wasn't ideal but we got through and we persevered so so now you're in your you know you're in your fourth year of, of playing of playing and getting a ton of minutes this year right so the trajectory the trajectory is going upward like it you know like you should getting a ton of minutes getting a, getting a ton of shots off 20 at st bonnie's 20 at st louis talk about the groove that you're in you're averaging a shade under 13 points this year like talk about the groove that you're in right now yeah uh minutes have definitely gone up uh coach told me last year that I was going to be playing a different role. Um, you know, we lost a lot of players. So I was going to need to look to score more, look to be more aggressive, um, which I was perfectly okay with. Um, but yeah, definitely a different role that I've just kind of bought into studying a lot of more film, um, just continuing to shoot my shots. I've had some off shooting nights, but you know, you can't let that get to you. Just get back in the gym, build your, get your confidence, keep your confidence high. Um, I've really just been focusing on what I do. Um, try to get it done every night, help my team in any way I can. Um, and then really been focusing on picking up my defensive side of the game, um, which still has some room for improvement, but so it's ne no one's, it's ne it'll never be perfect. Right. <laughs> nah, no question about it. So, I mean, so you've been playing there, right? Are you in your fourth year of playing? What's the biggest improvement that you, that you've made in your game since high school? Like, What's the biggest improvement that you made? You said you're still working on you're still working on your defense and stuff, but what's the biggest improvement that you've made since getting to Dayton? Yeah, I would just I would say uh even just recent improvement is just confidence in downhill attacking. Mm -hmm. Um high school I've I was kind of always known as a shooter, um three point shooter, that kind of stuff through college as well. Um, but I've had the ball in my hands a lot more this year. Um, coming off ball screens, pick and roll situations, hitting the hitting the diver, hitting the post player, or you know taking it all the way to the rim, finding a way to finish or get to the free throw line. Um, so I've worked a lot on that. Um, still working on it, but I think I've definitely upped that and added that to my game. No, no question about it. So you're in a unique situation, right? So you're going to be graduating in May which is the most important thing to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure it's the most important thing to you and your family as well. 
And your degree is going to be in what? So I graduated um, last a semester early last December with okay. my an undergrad. Um, I got a sport management degree with a business minor. Okay. And then uh, I'll be this May, I'll graduate with my master's in business administration. Good girl. Okay, good, good. And so what's the plan for that? Like, do you have a plan for that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I never th asked me in high school if I was going to come out of college with my MBA, I would have laughed. Um, mm -hmm. But now I'll have it. Um, I've always been interested in the business world. Obviously, my dad owns his own business, kind of in a business family. Mm -hmm. um, so that's exciting. As for the next step, I'm not really sure. I've always, you know, wanted to stay around the game in terms of coaching to get into coaching. Um, but the MBA has opened a lot of doors, um, financial advising, accounting, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Talk to some companies there. Um, but not really making any big decisions anytime soon. Kind of just trying to get through this, this season. Um, can go from there, but we'll see. Nah, no question. And, and, and again, you touched on a huge, a huge point that I love because I didn't even know that you graduated a semester early, right? So the job is, right, what I tell kids all the time is, right, you don't let basketball use you, you use basketball, right? And you use basketball, right, to get a bachelor's degree and a master's degree for free. Like yep. you maximize the game and you've maximized your college experience. And I think that's the key. So if you can touch on it, cause you know, some, some young student athletes will see this talk about how you did that. Right. Because, and how important the summer classes are and stuff like that and to plan stuff like that. And so did you make a plan to graduate early? Like, was that in your head? Like I want to do this and try to get my master's talk about that, that thought process. Uh, no, I didn't necessarily have a plan. I, I didn't know I was going to be here fifth year, um, obviously. Um, it kind of just worked out, but the only way it was made possible was staying on track. Never, I never dropped a class that I had signed up for, and I never failed the class my entire career. Um, and then I was always willing to take a summer class, even when, at, even when athletics didn't force you to take one. Um, I always was like, why not just knock another one off the list um, instead of taking even more at the back end? was my mentality. So when they were, when they were willing to pay for a class, I was willing to be enrolled in one. And then, you know, just took every class, every exam, every assignment seriously. And, uh, you know, studied, got good grades. You're, they call you a student athlete. So the student comes first was our, my mentality. And, you know, what they preach here at the university day and, um, gave, gives us a lot of support. Uh, couldn't have done it without the support that UD gives us, but made it happen. So in high school, you were a good student in high school, right? Yeah. What's the difference, right? And I've, I've heard this a lot. Like, what's the difference between how your study habits in high school and now your study habits that you established through through your years in college? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot different, high school versus college, but it really just comes down to nothing's impossible. It's not like the content's ridiculously hard. Obviously, it varies from your major, but comes down to time management and then just like your work ethic, you know, you manage your time, you don't procrastinate, everything's, it's all possible to get done and get submitted. And then you, you have to self-motivate yourself to get the work done in high school. You know, you might have some teachers, you know, chase after you, remind you, remind you, remind you to get things submitted and stuff like that. But in college, if you don't submit it, it's just going to be a zero type of thing. So you got to stay on top of yourself. No one's really chasing you down to, to do well, you have to do, you have to want to do well. So stay on top of your work. Yeah. <laughs> but talk about what happens though. Like you got a game in St. Louis uh, on the road. You gotta, you gotta get on the flight and get out there. And then you, and you got classes, you might miss a class. You might not miss a class. So you might get back late and have a, and have an early and have an early class. If you can take me through a typical day, like, okay, like we got a game on the road and how that works and getting work done and the preparation for the game. Cause like I said, like, I think a lot of student athletes feel like, yo, you're playing division one basketball. It's all glitz and glamor, but you know what I mean? It's a lot of work. And like you said, time management. So take me through a typical, you know, a typical travel and with getting work done and having to prepare to play a game on the road. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely not all glitz and glamor. Um, it's definitely a grind, but typical day on away game, 
you know, we'll leave the day before. So we'll probably practice in the morning and then go and get on the plane. So you're missing that, that whole day of school, however many classes you have that day. And mm -hmm. then you're playing the next day. So you're missing that. You're missing another whole day of school. And then you'll probably get home late, late at night on game day. Um, and then wake up, you might have an 8 a.m. the following day, that type of thing. Um, so, you know, for week weekday games, you're probably uh, away games, you're missing two days of school. You are constantly communicating with your professors. You're telling them weeks in advance that you're missing th this and that day. Um, you're looking to see which assignments the class is working on, um, when this exam is. Um, you're submitting things before they're even due so that your professor is more willing to work with you and be lenient. Um, but they preach relationship here at UD. So the better relationship you you make with your professors and your classmates when you are there, um, the the better the better it'll be. The more sorry, I'm looking at the comments and they're making me laugh. Um, <laughs> now I see you, Erin Whalen thinks you're doing a good job. Keep it up. <laughs> I know she's out in the living room. That's my roommate. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, yeah, just build relationships and we'll have your back pretty much. Nah, no question, no question about it. So, you know, as we get ready to wrap this thing up, I want I want to ask you um, just some questions. Um, best game in college, like your individual best game in college. Um, whew, that's a hard one. Uh, I guess I would say this year the St. Louis game gave me a lot of confidence. Um, I, we, we went into overtime at St. Louis. I had the ball in my hands a lot. I don't even think I shot very well percentage wise, but, um, I put up 20, um, coach had trusted me to take what the game when he shot and I shot, I ended up missing it, to, but still went into overtime. Um, so it wasn't the prettiest, prettiest of pretty games, but, um, it helped me build my confidence. I think gained some trust from some teammates, um, helped us gel a lot and, it was our first and first overtime game of the year, um, so it brought us all together. Um, but yeah, probably one of my better ones this season. Okay, so that so you just led me into my next question. So you said you had the ball in your hands with a chance to win the game. So that was my next question. There's ten seconds left in the game. Game is tied. You got the ball at the top of the key in a one-four set. What's the go-to move to win the game? You know, I was trying to do a little, you know, come off a brush screen, little in and out, get to the basket, try to try to get it in, or if not, at least get fouled. Mm -hmm. um, like like what usually happens, things didn't go my way. Uh, ended up taking a probably a 18 foot jump shot, which I had hit a couple of them in the fourth quarter and earlier in the game. So I thought it was going in when it left my fingertips. I think if you rewatch the tape, the whole bench thought it was going in, yeah. uh, but it decided to roll out. But I was trying to give a go for a little in and out, hezzy, just okay. you know, get them a little startled and get to the rim. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you're going to the park. It's you and four girls going to the park to play. Who are you taking with you? Who's going to run the court with you all day? Give me four girls. Are we talking past and, past and present. Don't even matter. We talking from home, from Albany area? Wherever you want. Wherever you want. Albany, Dayton, whatever. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I gotta gotta stick with the family, bringing my sister along. Okay. Uh, saw Selena a lot. Just got Defensive uh, Player of the Year, and we're in the Big East, so gotta get her on my her on my team. She got Defensive Player of the Year. I think yeah, she got co. It was just announced maybe an hour before we jumped on live. I think co Defensive Player of the Year and uh, first team. Hey, I ain't never seen Sal play D. Okay. So I said, I said you couldn't guard me ever. <laughs> uh. Shout out to the roommate, uh, bringing Aaron Whalen. She's got some range, some Seth Curry range, so okay. get around the floor with me. Okay. Uh, um, who else? Um, putting me on the spot here. Of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> um, what we got? Gabby, Selena, Aaron. Let's let's give us like a Sue Bird type of point guard. You know, okay. you said anyone. You said anyone. So let's go with a professional player. You think you bring a Sue Bird with you? Yep. Okay. Sound good to me. <laughs> Five dinner guests, dead or alive. All right. Uh, we're going Kobe Bryant. 
um, Kobe Bryant, both my grandmothers who have both passed. Yeah. And five dinner guests dead or alive. Yeah, you get two more. Um <laughs> Oh God. Um LeBron James. Okay. And um Michelle Obama. Okay. That's a tough question. And when, it you is get tough. Off, when you get off of here, you'll think of somebody else once I you know. get off of here. <laughs> last question, and this is the last question I ask everybody. When okay. it's all said and done and you played your last basketball game, how does Jenna Ciccone want to be remembered? Just want to be remembered as someone that showed up every day, worked hard, and uh, just grew and built great relationships with everyone around her. Um, I'm a big relationship person, um, so I just want to be remembered as someone who put in the same or more work than everyone else beside her um, and left an impact on everyone's life in one way or another. Now nah, you're, doing, you're doing that. You're doing that. Um, listen, I appreciate you coming on here and catching up with me, and I'm super proud of the, the young woman you've become and this bachelor's degree and master's degree and this great college career that you've carved out for yourself. Good luck the rest of the way, and I'll be watching. Thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate you. I appreciate it. Great catch All right. up. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. Thank you. All right. You got it.